The classic jungle scene that we see in the movies is typically what comes to mind when you think about surviving in the tropics. If you ever imagined yourself having to survive in a post-crash scenario, it might look something like this. You're dressed in khaki, busy hacking out a trail through the dense undergrowth. Drums beat, and hostile warriors try to pick you off with their spears and blowguns. While such images make for great Academy Award adventures, the reality of this situation is not likely. Even though the jungle, or tropical rainforest, as it is more commonly known, is a part of the tropics, it is just that, only one part. Some portions of the tropics can resemble a desert-like environment, or the grassy plains of Nairobi. For a region to be considered tropical, it must average over 80 inches of rainfall a year, with an average monthly temperature exceeding 64.4 degrees. Because of the proximity of tropical regions to the equator, they have only one season and a constant length of day and night. From this description, survival in the tropics doesn't sound too complicated, now does it? However, the tropics can pose unique problems, and without preparation and understanding, it can be deadly. One of the biggest medical problems faced in tropic survival are insects and infections. If you suffered any injuries during the forced landing, immediate and constant attention must be given. Because of the warm, moist environment, the slightest scratch can easily become infected. Any open wound must be frequently cleansed and covered. Insects are to the tropics as sand is to the desert. Insects thrive in a tropical environment. Many insects carry diseases and parasites. Mosquitoes, especially the Anopheles variety, can carry malaria. Blood-sucking insects like ticks are also common in the tropics. Because of this, it's important to routinely examine clothing, skin, and hair. If you find a tick attached to your skin, cover it with some type of irritant. A drop or two of kerosene, alcohol, or iodine may make them let go. The tip of a burning cigarette or a burning stick placed directly on the tick may also work. If the tick becomes dislodged, wash the affected area thoroughly. Fleas are another wingless, blood-sucking pest that can be prevalent in the tropics. Keep pant legs tucked into socks. It's not uncommon for tropical fleas to burrow under your toenails to lay eggs. Tropical flies typically lay eggs in open wounds, all the more reason to keep any wound covered and sterilized. High humidity is associated with tropical regions, so it's not uncommon for your clothing to be damp or wet. Do what you can to stay as dry as possible, especially before bedding down for the night. Staying dry is important in preventing skin disease or fungus. Before nightfall, you will need to construct a shelter. Start before the early evening because night falls very quickly. It's easy to lose track of time and available light source, especially if you have a dense canopy of foliage over you. When constructing a shelter, here are a few considerations to keep in mind. Construct your shelter on high ground or a high spot such as a knoll. Make sure it is in an open area and well away from water. You want a ground area that's away from potential insects. Try not to sleep directly on the ground. Elevate yourself by piling up several layers of palm fronds or other broad leaves to serve as a cushion. The goal is to try and remove yourself from crawling insects. A sufficient bed can be made by constructing an elevated A-frame. Do 
Doing this will keep your sleeping platform off the ground. A more comfortable shelter can be made by covering the top with four or five layers of long spineless palm leaves. Pieces of bark or mats of grass will help waterproof the shelter. You may find that the simplest tasks when performed in tropical heat and humidity are hard to accomplish because your energy is drained. You will need an abundant amount of rest and sleep to recover. Remember to start your shelter construction well before dark. Constructing a fire in the tropics is the most desirable form of keeping warm. Fuel for a fire should be plentiful, though most of it may be damp. To find dry tinder, try the inner layers of bark. Fibers in the base of palm leaves also make good tinder. Once you have a good, hot fire going, you can add damp wood to keep it burning. Creating a fire gives you heat and keeps you comfortable during the night as well as protecting you from mosquitoes, flies, and other potentially curious animals. It is not necessary to create a roaring fire, as a small one will serve your purpose and is easier to maintain. Signaling for rescue in the tropics poses several challenges. Surface-to-air signals, such as reflectors and rescue coats, may be ineffective because of the thick jungle foliage overhead. This can also impede the use of flares and launchers. To be effective, Signaling for rescue in the tropics needs to be performed out in an open area. This may require you to travel to get to a more desirable signaling area. Unless you know where you are and where you are going, don't risk travel too far away from your crash site. The reason for this is when your aircraft went down, it should have left some telltale signs for rescuers. Also, the aircraft's Emergency Locator Transmitter, or ELT, should be actively transmitting. This helps rescuers physically locate the area where the aircraft went down. This is why it is so important to stay near the wreckage, because this is the vicinity where rescuers are likely to search. Finding water should be an easy task. but be sure to purify all water from streams and surfaces before consumption. Water that is derived from precipitation is safe to drink. You can also drink water from plants without purifying. Many vines, if cut, will drip a steady stream of water. Cutting down a banana plant, leaving a one foot tall trunk can be an excellent source of drinking fluid. After cutting it, hollow out the trunk to form a deep bowl. In a few hours, the bowl will overflow with water. The banana plant bowl will produce water for about four days. Make sure to cover the fluid to protect it from insects. As a word of caution, if the surface of the water becomes covered with a blue tinted film, skim as much of it off as possible, as drinking this can make you sick. Tropical areas are a virtual farmer's market filled with delicious edible fruits. The papaya fruit is usually abundant in tropical areas. Some may weigh up to five pounds. The tropical star apple is also a good source of available nutrition. Wild pineapple is another fruit that typically can be found and eaten raw. However, you may want to consider cooking it as raw pineapple may cause stomach discomfort. Roots and bulbs, such as taro, cassava, and wild yams, are abundant and nutritious. Coconuts are also a potential source of sustenance. The coconut's meat, milk, and flowers can be safely eaten. Fortunately, in the tropics, there is an abundance of safe fruits and vegetables to eat. It's knowing where to look and how to prepare them where added knowledge is beneficial. Sources of meat in tropical areas are found primarily with fish and land crabs. Make sure that crabs and fish are thoroughly cooked. If faced with a survival situation in a tropical environment, realize that Mother Nature does provide you with resources. 
You can live off what the environment provides by using knowledge, common sense, and above all, your innate desire to survive.